All right. Okay. So recording is already on. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, making the time to be here. Um, actually, majority ng attendees ngayon um, nakatend na dun sa trading camp, so they already know uh, this part already, and then maybe they can also share later on kung ano experience nila with uh, trading psychology and risk management. Um, so this particular topic is very important because. Um, in trading, for me, there are actually uh, a few things that you need aside from your uh, trading strategy or your trading plan natin. Kasi po, yung, yung strategy mismo, uh, some people think that it's 90% of your success. It's actually not. Uh, I think that it's only one-third. Bakit one-third lang? Because the other parts, kapag wala po sila, uh, hindi rin magiging successful yung trading natin. Uh, so, strategy is one part. Of course, if you don't have a good strategy, if your strategy doesn't work, your trading will, you won't be successful in trading. Malabang, right? So, that's a given. But there are also uh, two things that are important for me, and that is trading psychology and risk management, which is often negated when it comes to trading. Eh, lagi pong nakakalimutan yan ng mga uh, new traders for the uh, old traders nanay na sila dyan, so they already know the importance of it but for people who are just starting out I believe that this is often uh, negated just as I did when I was uh, starting in trading okay? before uh, I thought that 90% of the solution was in the uh, in the trading system or in trading ano natin, yung, yung strategy but it actually wasn't there uh, I realized that there were a lot of times wherein I was already profitable and uh, sadly dahil uh, profitable yung strategy but because of poor risk management and poor trading psychology uh, ended up the same thing I had burnt accounts so um, let me just share a story with you on uh, how important trading psychology is I, I told this story before in some of my seminars already um, Gian and I, T. Goldie, G, T. Goldie uh, and I have a good friend. Uh, his name is Alok. Okay? He's from, uh, actually, from India. And uh, kasama namin siya, meron kaming uh, international group uh, that was active before. Not, now it's not so active anymore. Um, but uh, we had a trading group before wherein nagbabatuhan kami ng mga trade ideas. And uh, si Alok noon, he was a, he was a phenomenal trader. Um, when Every she trades, nagbibili siya signal sa amin kung kailan kami bibili, kung kailan ang ibibenta. We always take his trades um, because 9 out of 10 times, seriously, he kills the market. I think 9 out of 10, he kills the market. So, uh, lahat kami kumikita. Right? And siya, laging nasusunog yung account niya, which is very surprising. Diba? Paano, mo, paano siya matatalo kung 9 out of 10 trades niya, laging maganda or 8 out of 10 trades niya okay uh, he always had poor risk management sometimes he risks the right amount like siguro mga 2% 3% actually he's a higher risk taker normally mga 5 10% kasi ano so he a lot like 5% risk and then sometimes he just jacks it up to 50% risk or 30% sometimes the whole account in just one single trade so because of that uh, laging nasusunog yung account ni Alo and Kami naman, nagtataka kami, parang alok, lahat kami kumikita sa trades mo. Ikaw lang yung nasusunogan sa sarili mong trade. You're using the same trades as you are. So, minsan, inaabutan pa nga siya ng, binibigyan pa siya talaga ng pera ng group na alok, you continue trading because maganda yung signals mo. Eh. Kasi yung binibigyan namin sa yung pera is just from the profits that we generated from your own trade. Okay. So, it's very ironic. And uh, I think that uh, there's something to, to learn from that. Okay. Uh, another story that I'd like to share with you is merong recently tumawag sa akin uh, and uh, nasa group din siya okay? uh, not, of course I won't I won't say who it is um, nasa group din siya and uh, nagsisimula din pa lang siyang mag-trade relatively okay? uh, been a while na nag-trade okay? uh, and then she uh, nagkaroon siya ng uh, big loss okay? siguro mga one third ng account yung natanggal so, tinatanong niya, how do you cope up with uh, yung stress and yung, yung hassle na nangyari yun? So, uh, and then I asked her, um, 
tinignan mo na ba yung mga previous trades mo? Okay? Kasi in one trade, one third ng account mo yung na-wipe out. Naturally, uh, hindi maganda yung risk management doon. Pero eh, tingnan natin yung mga ibang trades mo. Okay? Uh, check mo yung history ng trades mo. Uh, your trading journal, supposedly. And then, yung pag-connect yung trades, if tama naman pala yung risk management, profitable naman pala siya talaga dapat. Okay? So, uh, after that, uh, I hope that she uh, felt a little better and uh, the realized na, na she actually was already a good trader. Okay? Hindi naman, let's say, talagang stable line, magaling, but she was supposed to be actually profitable. Basta tama lang yung risk management. Okay? So, uh, right. So, those are actually some of the stories that uh, I'd like to uh, tell you um, to show that trading psychology and risk management is very, very important in terms of trading. Uh, right. So, late. Okay. So, let's start with the, with the slides first. And uh, mamaya, we have some people in the group who have been trading for a while already. And I hope na makashare din yung ibang uh, members natin or attendees natin ng kanilang story about uh, trading psychology, risk management. Ano yung mga nararamdaman nyo yung time na uh, natatalo kayo or nananalo kayo or yung tama yung risk management nyo and then mali. So I hope you guys uh, share just a little bit about that. Right. So, okay, let's uh, let's start. Okay, so let's talk about uh, trading uh, psychology. Trading psychology. Right? So, just a few things that I'd like you to realize before uh, uh, before you guys trade is that when money and ego go together, your trading plan is compromised. Ano po ito sabi hino? Hindi nyo pa po napapansin na kapag nasa demo account kayo, lagi kayong panalo. And then, pag nilaro nyo na dun sa live account, hindi na pareho yung results. Madalas, parang sablay na yung live account natin. And then, parang bulat kayo, it's the same strategy that you used in the demo, and then yung sa live account na sablay. Okay. Now, bakit ganon? Okay. That's because, in your live account, you already have money involved and then you already have your ego involved as well. Okay. Ano po ipag sabihin ng ano? Money, malamang, pera. Okay. Uh, ego, what do you mean by ego? Ego is, uh, ito mismo. Um, do you accept na tama yung trade mo? Are you arrogant that you do not think that you will make mistakes? Um, so, yun yung mostly ego. Okay. Uh, so, when... Both of them go together in your trading plan. Your trading plan is compromised. So you always have to watch out for that. That's why your demo account is very different from your live account. Demo account, both yan, wala. Kapag walang pera involved yan. So if you lose, no problem. You can always make a new one. Okay? Uh, kapag natalo ka doon, you're on demo account. Uh, kaya ka nga nasa demo account para matuto. So there's no ego involved as well. Especially kapag uh, you already have your peers in trading. Sabihin natin, may mga kaibigan ka or mga ka-family members mo na nakikita ka nila mag-trade, and then natalo ka, tapos parang minsan it's kind of hard to tell them that, or parang gusto mo may minimaintain ka na, na uh, how people look at you, that uh, you're always profitable. Okay? So that's ego right there. Okay? Actually, very strong yan sa mga uh, Filipino traders. Okay? Uh, personally, ako din po, I went through that, and uh, I felt that before. And it was a very difficult spot to be in. So, I hope that you guys let go of your ego whenever you're trading. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to suffer losses. Okay? Uh, hindi naman pera ng mga katabi nyo yan. Okay? So, it's, it's really just you. Okay? Right. So, now, let's have a uh, um, guide kung ano yung dapat natin gawin um, before and... Uh, before making a trade and then after, during uh, during a trade and then uh, para at least ma-manage natin siya na maayos. No? Alright. So, before opening a trade, okay, we have a few things to consider. Okay? Number one is your trading plan. Okay? Kailangan po, meron tayong trading plan. We gave you a couple of ideas in the previous webinars before on uh, how to make a trading plan or basically elements ng trading plan. I hope you guys uh, use that very well. You have your trend, you have your confirmation there. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the previous webinar. Okay, my recording is so you guys check it out. 
um, yung talagang final trading plan, how to set it up, maybe we can discuss that on the last day of our webinar, which is yung fifth day natin. So, you always have to have a trading plan. Yeah, naturally, uh, kailangan yung trading plan nyo is very solid. Um, kapag wala kang trading plan, bara-bara lang yung pasok natin. Uh, malabo yun. It, it's not gonna work. Uh, if you just base it on gut feel every time, okay lang naman mag-trade gut feel. Uh, if you've been, if you're kind of used to the market, uh, talagang may mga trades na medyo gut feel, but um, don't do it all the time. Konti lang dapat yun. So you always have to have a uh, trading plan that fits your uh, that fits your uh, yung strategy na binuo mo. Then, uh, Meron ka dapat checklist doon. Checklist meaning you have a criteria, uh, several criteria on entering a trade. So, uh, hindi ipig sabihin na kapag sa tingin nyo okay na siya, pasok na kayo kagad. No, you have to have a solid criteria, a solid checklist before you actually enter a trade. Kapag wala siya sa checklist, um, then do away with that trade. You will always have other opportunities. Um, second is a risk management, which we will discuss uh, a little later. And then, third one is a logical target. Marami po kasing times nang nangyari, pero na yung, pero na, naging bato pa. Because you were a little greedy. So that's uh, where greed kind of comes in. Uh, for me, daming beses na po nangyari sa akin yan. Okay, I had like big trades. Ang lalaki na nung ano. Ang uh, laki na nung kinita mo. You feel, uh, you're the king of the world. Yung pag ang laki nang kinita mo. And then suddenly, they take it away. Kasi you let it run for too long. Okay? Uh, hindi na logical yung target. Uh, so, yeah, that's the trading plan. And then, second one is, um, can you avoid analysis paralysis? Ano po yung analysis paralysis? Uh, I'm sure you might have heard of it uh, somewhere. Uh, kapag medyo nagsistart pa lang tayo mag-trade. Uh, analysis paralysis means, um, if you have so many factors you have to consider inside the trade, lahat na lang tinitingnan mo, lahat ng klaseng indicator nilagay mo, uh, and then you also take in lahat ng passing news na marinig mo. And then you have so many, so many information coming in. Magugulan po kayo nun. Okay, that's analysis paralysis. You have a lot of things telling you to sell. You have a lot of uh, information telling you to buy. And then you have a lot of um, in the middle of everything na unconfirmed view ano, yung trade. Okay. So if you have so many things that you're looking at, uh, you, will be, you will have this uh, analysis paralysis. For me, uh, it also happened... Uh, before a lot of times, that in charts ko makulay din. Uh, I had so many, so many indicators there, and uh, sa totoo lang, more than like eighty percent probably are uh, are I, I don't really know how to use. Parang sinasama ko lang silang additional criteria. So because I think that will make the trade uh, better, okay? which probably won't. Uh, so just pick the ones that you think you will need. Okay? Yung price action. Natin, I think maybe we can discuss it uh, later on or in the fifth day natin. Uh, how to really check the charts, how they move uh, without uh, indicators. Um, mind you, I'm not saying that indicators are bad. I'm just saying that if you don't know how to use them, they're useless. Okay? Indicators are actually very useful in what they do. Okay? But if you don't know what you're doing, they're useless to you. Okay? So, hindi sila a magic combination of... of uh, of indicators. Hindi pag pinagsama mo ang RSI, ang fractals, at saka ang stochastic together with uh, with uh, moving averages. Doesn't mean that the more indicators you put, the higher the chances of your trade being better. Okay? Hindi po ganun yun. You have to know what the indicator is actually doing. Right? So, uh, if you have an indicator that tells you uh, if the market is already oversold and overbought, having five of those is useless. Kasi yung isa pa lang, sinabi sa'yo kung overbought na or oversold na yung market. So, that's what I'm just saying here. If you have so many things on your charts, if you have so many information coming in within for that particular trade, you will have analysis paralysis, which I want you to avoid. So, keep your trading simple. Okay. Now, um, third one is accept the small risk uh, when entering a trade. Kasi madalas po sa atin, kapag pumasok kayo ng trade, you're already looking at the profit. Okay. Nakita nyo na yung take profit nyo eh. You're already targeting like $200 from this trade. Okay. So, hindi mo naisip na whenever you're entering that trade, you're, you already have uh, a certain amount of risk involved in it. 
So, from the start, what I want you guys to do is to accept the small risk whenever entering a trade. Kasi kapag hindi nyo po tanggap yung risk na ilalagay nyo dun sa trade na yon, it will really uh, wreck your trading psychology. It will bother you. Okay? It will uh, change yung uh, trading strategy nyo if you do that. So, from the start, from the get-go, accept the small risk that you're putting into the trade. Uh, fourth one is uh, Jesse. It, is everything okay? Parang in the chat voice or oh, whatever. Clear, clear pa ba yung audio? Can you guys hear me? Okay, so everything's still cool. All right. Uh, when you said you're holding a trade too long, how to say it is too long or already? Okay, actually that's a very good question. Um. So, let's say the um, basis mo of trading is you entered the, um, you're, you're using the support and resistance more, the zones mo from an hourly chart. No? H1 ang gamit mo. Tapos, nakita mo na meron ka nang tinrade. Kasi sabi natin, binili natin. No? And then, uh, meron ka nang logical target na 1 is 2 sa H1 chart. Right? So, okay yun. That's already a good chart. But, let's say you move up to a D1 chart. Tapos nilayan mo yung target mo. Ang dami mo ng, uh, let, dami mo ng resistances na dadaanan sa H1 chart. That might not be logical anymore. So you might be holding a trade too long already. Uh, yun naman yung ipig sabihin ko ng, ano, ng uh, trade too long. Maybe meron pa akong mga ibang uh, ideas on that. Such like uh, such as the market usually moves in like 3 to 5 days. Tuloy-tuloy. Okay? So if it moves in one direction normally, nasa mga 3 to 5 days yan. You're holding it for too long and you're just doing it as a swing trader, um, magre-retrace at magre-retrace talaga yung market. Nababalik ang market. So, uh, that's that's uh, what I meant about holding a trade too long. If it's not a logical target anymore, kapag marami nang masyadong uh, zones na dadaanan siya, resistance and support na dadaanan before it goes to take profit. Or you're holding a trade for like two weeks, nasa hourly chart ka lang, so medyo hindi siya tama yung, ano, yung chart na gamit ko. Uh, is that clear? Was I able to answer the question? Yeah, okay. So, di ba? Sayang, no? I'm sure lakay na nung perang kinita mo na, no? So, biglang binalikan na. Sakit. Could have bought you like a pair of shoes already. So, sana i-share mo din yan mamaya. Okay. So, anyway. Um, hashtag really. <laughs> nice one. Right. So, and then, uh, number four is that, uh, this is what's interesting. Um, this was uh, said to us by Master Fendi. Uh, ito yung Master ni Goldie. Um, the market is limitless. The market will, actually, ang term niya is that the market will always be there. The market will always be there. And ito yung ipig sabihin nun. Uh, ipig sabihin po nun is that, hindi po kayo iwanan ng market. Okay? Kapag na-miss niyo po yung pagpasok ng trade na yun, it's alright. Okay? You will always have another trade with the same strategy. The market is limitless. It will always be there. You don't need to... Uh, hindi, nyo, hindi kayo kailangan magmukmuk kapag namintis niyo yung isang trade. Okay? So, uh, there's a lot of pairs. There's a lot of uh, trades that you can take. Missing one is fine. So, yan yung ano natin. Uh, kapag hindi pasok dun sa buong trading plan nyo, and then feel nyo talaga kailangan nyo ipasok yung dun sa trade na to, um, remember that the market is limitless. You will have the same opportunity again next time. So, hindi mo kailangan ipilit yung trade niya. Uh, that is one thing that is very important whenever uh, you're going to open a trade. Hindi mo po kailangan ipilit yung trade. You will always have opportunities in the future. Right? So, that's what you do before opening a trade. Uh, you have your trading plan. You have you avoid your analysis paralysis. You accept the small risk. And remember that the market is limitless. Right. So, these are the things that um, people uh, or traders normally have a hard time uh, dealing with. Okay. What to do when holding a losing trade? Uh, this is uh, the usual questions that people ask. Okay. And personally, I also ask this question a lot when, when I was trading. And personally, hanggang ngayon, um, ako pa rin to. If, I, if I have a losing trade, um, trading psychology still gets compromised. Okay. So, what do you do when you're holding a losing trade? So, doubt sets in. Okay? If you're holding a losing trade, doubt sets in. Uh, your, uh, you check your journal. Okay? Um, uh, sorry. 
uh, doubt sets in. What do you mean by doubt sets in? Doubt sets in, um, parang inisip mo, tama ba yung trade ko? Uh, did, did I do it right? Why did I take this trade again? Parang mali yata yung strategy ko. Uh, I think I should put in like a few more indicators to make it better, okay? to filter uh, instances like these. Okay? So, yan yung, ano, yan yung mga usual uh, things that cross your mind whenever you're holding a losing trade. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is you check your journal. Um, as much as possible, uh, try to have a trading journal. It's a pain to keep it kasi sa totoo lang po nakakatamad siyang i-update. If you have a trading journal, nakakatamad i-update, i-log in yung trade mo, bakit mo kinuha yung trade na yan. Kung masipag ka, you can even have a screenshot of your trade. Um, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big pain to have a trading journal but it's very important. Why? Because you have a trade log on why did you open that trade. So, whenever you ask that particular question, bakit ko ulit binuksan tong trade na to? Nasa negative $50 ako, bakit ko siya ulit binuksan? Okay? So, you check your journal. That will literally answer your question. Okay? Why did I open this trade? Now, um, if it fits your strategy, you open this trade kasi doon sa checklist mo, pasok sa lahat. Okay? It, it was really part of your checklist. It was a valid trade. Okay? Then, if it's a valid trade, it's a valid trade. You give your, you cut yourself some stock. Okay? Tama yung ginawa nyo. Okay? According to your trading plan. So, it's okay. You can erase the doubt because given the same circumstances, ito din talaga yung ginawa mo. Or, or yung rather, yung gagawin mo. Okay? You check your journal. Number two, you check your risk. Okay? Kasi, Baka naman, nahihirapan ka dun sa trade na yon. you're having a difficult time holding the losing trade because you didn't have good risk management. Okay? Pag tinamaan yung stop loss nyo, is the risk acceptable? That's a very good question to take. Kapag hindi nyo kaya i-take yung risk na yon, if the risk is not acceptable, then you already had the problem from the start. Before you open the trade, mali na agad yung ginawa natin. Right? So you check the risk. Ideally, you should only risk 1 to 2% in every trade that you make. So, ito lang, mataas na yung 2%. And personally, I risk below 1%. Okay? Uh, but that's just my style. Okay? Kaya, depende po sa inyo. So, check, check the risk. Sa akin, if I lose 0.5% of my portfolio, it's fine. I can sleep at night. I can accept the risk. Number three, check your ego. Ito po yung sinasabi natin kanina. Am I attached to this trade? Am I trying to prove something to myself? Or am I trying to prove something to the world? Am I trying to uh, prove that the strategy I created is the best strategy in the whole world? Okay. Are you too attached to that trade? Okay. So, you should also check your ego. Uh, tingnan mo. Uh, you can make some uh, mistakes. It's okay. You, 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 it's very natural to make mistakes in the forex market. Kasama po talaga yan. Um, nakasulat dito sa uh, go to meetings ko na nawala yung audio ng sandali. Did I lose the audio for for a few seconds there? Or di naman? Nope? Alright, that's good. Okay. So, okay. So, are you uh, are you too attached to this thing? Okay, so check. If you're too attached, then Check your ego. Okay? If not, it's eh, okay. Lang yan, okay? And then number four, I highly advise it, is to avoid looking at the charts all the time. Okay? Naintindihan ko po na kapag nagsimula tayo mag-trade, medyo nakaka-excite po siya. Lalo pag pinigita tayo. Okay? So, uh, I want you to avoid looking at the charts all the time. You only look at the charts when you need to. Okay? Look at the charts whenever you're looking for a probable setup. And if you already found the probable setup and then wala ka nang kailangan tingnan si charts, then by all means, close your charts, go do something else. Okay? Enjoy time with your friends, with your family, that's why you're a trader. So, nakaka-adjit po kasi kapag nakaharap ka si charts at nakikita mong lumalaki yung loss mo, liliit ng konti, lalaki, liliit, uh, nakakasira po ng ulo lang. Okay? So, for example, you have a loss like, uh, negative $50, no? Tapos biglang magiging negative $70. Tapos biglang magiging negative $80. And then, suddenly, it goes back to $30. Tapos biglang magiging minus $10 na lang. So, parang you feel a little calm, calmer. And then, after a while, biglang bababa na ulit. Minus $80 na ulit. Minus $90. Tapos, lalagpas na. Magiging minus $100. So, 
if you look at the charts all the time, it will really give you a big headache and doubt will really set in your mind. Okay? So, may stop loss ka naman eh. Okay? You already have your levels. Inanalyze mo na kung saan yung exit mo eh. So, or rather, saan yung cut, cut loss mo. Okay? So, avoid looking at the charts all the time. Only look at them if you need to. Right? So, uh, whenever, so let me just recap. Whenever you uh, have a losing trade and doubt sets in, you're having a difficult time managing it. Number one, check your journal. Tama ba talaga yung ginawa ko? Pag hindi pasok sa trading plan, alam mo na kung saan yung mali mo. Okay? Number two, check your risk. Kaya mo bang tanggapin kung nawala yung or natalo tayo sa trade na yan? Kung kaya naman tanggapin, then good for you. Okay yan. Okay? If you check your ego, okay? are you too attached to this trade? Are you trying to prove something to yourself or to the world? Okay? If you are, then I think that uh, you should uh, you shouldn't do that or you you take that off of me. Uh, hindi kailangan yan ng, uh, ng isang trader. You, you don't need that to be profitable in the market. And then number four, avoid looking at your charts all the time. This is really important. Right. Now, let's move on to something more difficult. Okay? Something far more difficult. Okay? Which is how to manage a winning trade. Akala ng mga tao na managing a losing trade is very difficult. No, my friend, it's not. Okay? It's actually managing a winning trade that's difficult. Okay? What do you mean? Okay? Because whenever you're managing a losing trade, okay, one thing profit pa lang, gusto mo na siyang isara. Okay? Hindi ka pa umabot sa take profit mo, gusto mo na siya agad isara. Okay? Because you already have uh, money in the bag. Okay? And then especially pag kinitig na mo yung charts mo and it's reversing, I showed this in the Dun sa trading camp before. Okay. Um, so, this was a trade that I took before uh, for the NGD. Uh, so, uh, I had a good setup right there and then I sold it. Okay. Uh, and then, nung sinel ko siya, ang target ko is uh, way below there at uh, around 0.734 uh, 40 something, 46 maybe, okay. uh, or 37.50 siguro yan. Now, when the market went down, uh, it reversed a little bit. Okay? So, pag nakita nyo po yung ganyan, ako, medyo nakaka-ajit na yan. Kasi I already have some money in the bag and then I see the market reversing even before it hits my take profit. Okay? Minsan, gusto ko na siyang isara agad. Okay? Personally, when this trade happened to me, gusto ko siya isara. Okay? It was very difficult to manage a winning trade. Okay? But, this is what happened after. It's, one, it's on your right. Uh, it's the one on the right. Makit sa onte and then it went down again. So apparently, retrace lang pala siya. Okay. So, uh, good thing I stuck to um, my trade. So, tuloy-tuloy naman siyang umabot sa TP ko. Which was, uh, uh, which was great. Okay. So, what can we learn from, uh, what can we learn from that? Okay. Apparently, uh, I'm sure, Kayo po mismo, uh, if you have your live accounts already, kapag demo, walang kwenta yan. Okay? Hindi mo mararamdaman yan sa demo. Okay? But if you have live accounts already, and then nakikita mo, may profit ka na ng mga goods. Hindi natin, $30 na, $50, $80 na yung profit mo, and uh, gusto mo na siya isara kagad, kahit target mo, nasa 1, nasa 1 is to 1 ko lang yung trade mo, wala ka pong 1 is to 2 sa take profit mo. Uh, it's it's really difficult to, to hold it. So, what should you do okay, to manage your winning trade? Mostly kasi, kapag nakita natin nag-profit na yung trade, feeling mo, profit ka na agad. Okay? Feeling mo, nasa yun na agad yung pera. Okay? Which is really bad. Okay? Hindi dapat ganun yung logic natin. Okay? Accept that a winning position is not yet a profitable trade until it hits your target. Medyo masakit siyang tanggapin, no? Accept that the winning position is not yet a profitable trade until it hits your target. So, huwag niyo po munang isipin na yung profit na nandun sa account niyo or nandun sa floating profit niyo ay profit niyo na agad. Okay? It's not yet your profit until you close it or until it hits your target. Because, anytime, pwedeng bumalik na ang market. You have plus $80 and then after... 10 minutes, it becomes negative 80. Okay? It hits your, or, or it even hits your stop loss. Okay? 
So, accept that the winning position is not yet a profitable trade until it's fixed your target. Kasi masakit po yung iniisip nyo na na profitable na yung trade nyo, meron na kayong $80 na tumat, na nagiging $90, nagiging $70, $90, $70, makakit po ba? Okay? Na-accept nyo na agad, simula pa lang, na profit na agad yung trade nyo. Paano pag bumalik na yung market? You would feel really terrible. Okay? Pag bigla siyang bumaba ng $30, $20, or minsan nag-break even, or biglang nag-negative pa, masakit po yun. Okay? So, in order to avoid that, accept that the winning position is not yet a profitable trade until it takes your time. So, when in doubt, okay, minsan, kagaya nung kung nangyari po kanina dun sa New Zealand dollar, okay, nakashort tayo, nag-retrace yung market ng konti pa kaya. So, doubt sets in. Okay? Um, when doubt sets in, what do you do? Okay? Uh, hi, Kent. What's up? Okay. Uh, I mean, okay, nice to have you here. So, what do you do when doubt sets in? Number one, is your target logical? Ano po ipig sabihin ng logical target mo? Okay? Is your target logical? Ipig sabihin po, nandun ba siya just before the next zone? Okay? Next zone or next resistance? Sabihin natin, boom, ano tayo? Bumili tayo, no? We bought. Okay. And then, nakikita mo naman kung nasaan yung next resistance mo or yung next supply zone mo. I think we tackled that in the previous uh, in the previous webinar kung paano natin hanapin yung mga, yung mga zones. Okay. So, is it before your next zone? Because if it's after your next zone, it still has to break it before it reaches your target. So, your target is not logical anymore. There's a good chance that it's not gonna reach your target. Kasi, kailangan pa niyang mabasag yung resistance before siya umabot sa target mo. And then, yung risk reward mo, is it logical? Okay, if you're risking 25 pips and then you're going for 1 is to 2, you're aiming for 50 pips, okay yun, logical target yun. And then within before the next resistance. Pero your only risk, sabi natin, you're risking like 10 pips and then ang target mo is 300 pips. Maybe that's not so logical anymore. Maybe you're extending your luck a little bit. Okay. So, when in doubt, is your target logical? Tingnan mo, kaya bang kabutin yung target mo? Kapag kaya kabutin, okay lang yan. Okay. Do the trade alone. Kapag hindi, kapag hindi kaya abutin yung target, okay, if you think it's too far, then there's something wrong with the trade. Okay. Maybe you should lower your target a little bit. Okay. Then, next is, ito yung usual tanong sa sarili natin. Are the charts really reversing or is it just a retrace? Okay. So, tignan nyo mo mabuti yung chart. Okay. Remember that prices need to move down in order to move up and the prices need to move up in order to move down. So, there will always be retracing. Okay. The market is bound to retrace. Uh, kung tinignan nyo na may market, it's not moving in a straight path. It's moving up, down, up, down, up, down and then just favoring one time. So, tignan mo, are the charts really reversing or is it just a retrace? Nandun ba siya sa specific uh, supports or resistance mo giving you some confirmations that it's, re that it's reversing? Pag ganun, that is a reversal. But if it's just in the middle of everything and then umakit lang siya ng sandali, okay, that would just probably be a retrace. Okay? Kapag wala kang nakikita ng zones na tinatangaan niya. And then, same advice, please avoid looking at your charts all the time. Kasi po, yan ang mas nakakabaliw. Kapag nakita niyo yung profit nyo, and then, bumababa siya, umaakyat, bumababa, umaakyat. Okay. That will really push you to close the trade earlier than expected. Okay. So, I suggest that you avoid looking at your charts all the time. Kasi, kapag hindi nyo naman talaga kailangan tignan yung charts, it will only screw up with your, uh, or rather, screw with your uh, trading psychology. So, I advise against looking at your charts all the time. So, any questions um, with what we discussed? Nope, all good. All right. Siguro yung iba sana makapag-share. Okay. Um, sino yung mga may experience na dito na uh, let's go with the uh, previous uh ones that we discussed, no? Um, meron ba dito ang naka-experience na nung analysis paralysis? You can turn on your, ano, your audio, ah, para at least marinig naman kayo ng mga iba. Brave Souls, sino gusto mag-contribute?
dati meron si Sir ano, Sir Ariel. Pampagan pampaganda lang ng chart yung sabi mo. Oh, you can bro, you can turn on your ano, your uh, your audio. Ah. Maybe you can tell us what happened. Ano yung mga nilagay mo sa chart and then was it peaceful or not? Hello. Yeah, hello. Yep, we can hear you. Ah, uh, yun nga, parang dati, uh, actually ngayon, madami pa rin mga lines. Ah. Uh-huh. Kasi yun yung strategy, pero, yun lang, pampaganda lang ng chart. Right. Uh, pag- Kasi nung baguhan pa ako. So, wow, what um, is, oh. ko pa rin, yung mga uses ng mga indicators, pero testing ko lang dati. Right, 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 right. So, uh, did it, parang mas nahirapan po ba kayong uh, mag-trade nung parang ang dami mong tinitingnan or, or hindi naman? Uh, depende, pero pang filter lang naman. Ah, okay, okay. okay. So, it wasn't really mine. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Thank you, sir, for for sharing that. Okay. Meron bang iba na naka-experience okay. ng analysis para hindi? Si Sir Vito, okay? My first three months, I have so many indicators. Sir, could you uh, share a little bit about that? Ano po yung mga nilagay nyo? And then, ano yung experience nyo nung... Ano yung na-feel nyo nung... <laughs> nung antami yung binabasang indicator? Mhm. Ay, may audio ko sir. <laughs> anyway, uh, salita na lang pag may audio na ay Anyway, so uh di, di ako marinig. Uh, I have lots of indicator uh, that is saying buy or sell. Ayan, I, I'll just read it out kay Sir Vito. So hindi daw uh hindi daw maano yung audio niya, but uh marami siyang indicators before that says buy and sell. And uh, I think that could be very confusing. Uh iba no sir. Kahit ako, I also experienced that uh, yung mga tampo yata or dosing indicator nilagay ko. And, uh, so that made trading very difficult. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, para sa inyo po, uh, for, for the people who's here, uh, may time na po ba na nangyari na you had uh, a winning trade already and then uh, bumalik chat break even or nahit yung stop loss nyo. And then if if that happened to you before, uh, share nyo naman kung ano yung na-feel nyo nung time na yun. Greedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, sorry. Um, may question dito kay Sir Lester. Uh, the question is, Uh, sir, if the price is all uh, almost hit your target profit and suddenly the price reverses and gives you negative, how can you handle it? Okay. Um. All right. Yung parang malapit na si take profit mo, no? Personally, what I do is that uh, pag umaabot na siya dun sa malap, pag umaabot ako minsan sa one is to one risk reward ratio, ah, uh, nilalagay ko na sa break even yung trade. Usually, usually that's what I do. Uh, lalo na kapag uh, medyo binabading ako dun sa trade. Uh, yun, I, I put it at break even pagdating ng 1 is to 1 risk reward. So let's say I'm risking like uh, 50 pips in the trade or sabi natin 40 pips in the trade. Uh, when it reaches positive 40 pips already, nasa break even na or plus 1 pip na yung trade ko, uh, dun ko siya usually binibreak even. So you can move your stop loss if you want to. Okay. Para at least medyo risk free. Another uh, method that you can do is kung gusto mo, you can actually close half of the lot. Uh, later, I can show it to you. So, sabihin natin, you opened one lot and then 
malapit na siya doon sa profit mo, gusto mo yung sara ng konti, you can actually close half of the lot if you want to. Um, 0.5 yung isasara mo. Uh, you will end up with closing 0.5 lots and then leaving 0.5 open. So you can actually do that. Um, so that your trade won't go back to negative anymore. However, if um, bumalik lang siya talaga sa negative, let's say hindi natin nagawa yun, the price almost hits your TP and then reverses, gives you a negative, uh, wala eh. so We just have to accept that, well, a winning position is not yet a profitable trade until it hits your target. So hanggang hindi pa na-hit yung target mo, huwag niyo po muna isipin na sa inyo na po yung pera. So I guess that's the best, best way to go about it. Uh, na nasagot ko po ba, sir? Ayan, okay. So, break even is better than negative. Yes. Pero, um, let me uh, just uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Huwag po tayo agad mag-break even. Ha? Kapag may konting profit, tapos i-break even mo agad, uh, hindi po maganda yun kasi baka pitikin lang na market yun. So, make sure that you already have some uh, profit talaga na medyo lumayo na siya ng konti before i-break even. Huwag yung pag, pag profit ng konti, break even ka agad kasi pitikin lang uh, yes, consider also yung spread, sabi ni Sir Kent. Kaso naka-private message ka saan, Sir Kent. Uh, people can read that. Uh, okay, is it dependent on ADR of a particular pair when moving uh, to break even? You know what? Actually, uh, that's the first time it crossed my mind. Uh, I guess that uh, we have some very interesting thoughts from Sir Vito. Um, uh, ADR is, let me just explain. ADR is average daily range. Okay? Basically, it... Uh, it gives you an idea on how much a pair can move in a day. So, sabihin natin ang Euro USD, normally it moves like 100, 120 pips in a day. So, um, if you have, let's say, na reach na niya yung buong ADR niya okay, for the day, and it's outside of your uh, stop loss or outside of your break even, yung range na yun, let's say, kahit i-maximum niya yung buong range ng ADR na yun, hindi pa rin niya maaabot yung break even mo then maybe that's a good time to move your break even to i sorry move your stop loss to break even okay. so that's a, actually an excellent thought there uh good stuff all right uh yon si sir ariel po yon sakto uh greed comes in you you profit a little bit and then babalik sa talo okay and then tapos revenge trading yan sobrang sakto po sir uh, na yun yung ginawa ko po before. It's a really horrible thing to do, right? Uh, yun. But I hope you guys don't do that. So, yun po. Yeah, over trading. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, th thanks for sharing, guys. Uh, that, that, that was great. Okay. So, before we move on to risk management, let's take a short break first. Uh, I think it's already uh, 10 o'clock anyway. So, uh, let's have our uh, short break first. Maybe let's rest for 10 minutes. I'll be back in uh, 10 minutes. Okay. And then if you guys have questions uh, in between, please chat me lang so that we can answer them after the break. So I'll be back in 10, 10, 10 12.
Okay. So, wait lang. Back read lang ako. So, okay. Hi, Sir Vito. Uh, actually, going well. Um, may short ako sa UJ. Well, hindi, hindi ito yun. This is not it. This is the demo account. Uh, so, it's just pretty going well. Elite? Hindi ako elite. Marami lang ako nasunog na accounts. <laughs> uh, USD card? Hindi. Hindi ko siya nakuha. Sadly. Uh, I actually entered it, uh, I think, early. So, umangat siya to profit and it hit break even for me. Uh, Nag-stop pa siya nung isang araw. Eh. Then went up already. So, oh well. Anyway, yung USD, Euro USD, it still looks like it's a. Uh, Medyo pa baba pa rin siya. Eh. Uh, pero siguro malapit na. Yan. I'm expecting it siguro mga 1.080. Siguro dun siya mag bounce. Uh, that's, that's what I can read. It's currently in the zone right now. Uh, nasa support zone siya ngayon. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, if something happens, if we get some kind of reversal, hopefully uh, by 11 o'clock na yun, or maka next week na yan, mga Tuesday, at around that price level, uh, maybe we can start buying it. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue. All right, risk management. Okay, risk management. Um, risk management is also very important, so aside from um, your trading psychology, risk management is also very important. Just like what uh, Alok did before, uh, yung Pinwent also in early on. And so he had uh, terrible risk management. That's why he really had a hard time in the uh, forex market. So what I suggest is that uh, your risk profile should be only 1-2% to yung top loss asset. Okay, and then later on, ipapakita eh, ko how do we actually compute that. Dun sa mga nagtitrade na, alam na alam nyo na ito, tanin na try it. But uh, for the people who are just starting out in trading, computing, lot sizing, or stop losses might be tricky at the start. Okay. So let's uh, go through that uh, later. Uh, let's have a live trade. So at least makita natin kung paano ito. So what I suggest is that you only risk 1-2% to of your account okay, in every trade. Okay. Honestly, ako 1% nga lang eh. Huwag yung man, kung mangat na kayo sa 2%, masyado nang mataas yun. It's already considered high risk. So, uh, that is actually what I learned from uh, yung Alpha Play, yung mga kaibigan natin sa Singapore. Uh, that 3% is already high risk in the forex market if you're risking 3%. So, uh, for the people who are risking 10%, 20% of your account, that is not only high risk, that is very high risk. So, at least you have a gauge on ano ba yung high risk sa medium risk, low risk. Okay. So, ang alam kong ang na-mention was that below 2% is low risk, 2 to 3% is medium risk, and 3 above is higher. Uh, sorry, is high risk. Okay. So, maybe at least from there you have a good gauge on uh, kung anong ginagawa nyo sa trades yung currently. So, uh, where do you compute that? Yung 1 to 2% natin. It's based on your equity. Okay. Kung magkano yung pera nyo sa account. So, equity ah, hindi balance. Equity. So, um, or rough estimate sa equity. Kasi minsan may mga nag-hold ng napakalaking loss. So, hindi nagre-reflect sa balance. Pero yung equity, uh, doon nagre-reflect. So, kung ano talaga yung, magkano talaga yung pera nyo. So, uh, you compute that with your stop loss and together with correct loss size. So, to, we will compute for that in a while, uh, I'll give you the actual breakdown of it. Okay. For the uh, for a no-brainer trade, kung ayaw niyo compute, okay, this is an easy way to do it. You just compute it based on exposure. Okay. Exposure is that how many lots are you going to trade for every certain amount of capital you have. So uh, what I suggest is that for every hundred dollars that you have in your account, you only trade a maximum of 0 0.01. Okay. 
So, if you have 500 dollars in your account, you should only pay the maximum of 0.05. Okay. If it's 200 dollars, 0.02. If it's 800 dollars, 0.08. If it's 3,000 dollars, it should only be maximum of 0.3. Okay. And ang sinasabi ko po dito is maximum yon. Maximum total open trade, hindi po na maximum per trade. Okay. So, it is maximum total open trade. Ang ibig sabihin po, yun lang yung maximum na trade nyo at a time. So, for example, meron kayong, let's say you have $1,000, no? And then, so naturally, the maximum you can get is 0.1, meaning $1 per pick lang ang pwede natin. Okay? Allotment for the total trade that you have. So, sabihin natin, meron kang buy na Euro USD na 0.05. That's already half of your uh, 0.1 allotment. And then sabihin natin, bumili ka din sa sa pound USD, okay? 0.05 ulit. So currently, ang open trades mo is you have dalawang 0.05 trades which adds up to 0.1. So naabot mo na yung maximum exposure mo. And then you see another opportunity in USD JPY. Gusto mo siya short. Okay? So if you wanna go short in that trade, lagpas ka na dun sa 0.1 mo na maximum. Huwag mo nang kunin. Okay? So that's what I meant about exposure. You can only have 0.01 lots per hundred dollars that you have. Okay? Para hindi po high risk. So kahit malaki yung movement ng market, kapag yan lang ang gamit mong uh, lot sizing, hindi ka mababurn yan. Either. Okay? Lalo na pag may stop losses ka pa na okay? you won't You won't get burned with that uh, account very easily. Okay? And na wala, uh, sorry, uh, I the audio went out for a while. Um, let me just recap what I, what I said uh, in a very, uh, it's young enough. So, exposure, you use that if you want to have a no-brainer uh, lot sizing. So, you should only expose a maximum of 0 0.01 lots per $100 of your uh, account. Okay. So, let's go with, uh, say, mamaya konti lot sizing. Unahin muna natin risk reward. So, risk reward, yan yung kanina ko pang minimension na 1 is to 2, 1 is to 1, 1 is to 3, ano po ba yan? That is risk reward ratio. Okay. Ibig sabihin po, for a certain amount of risk that you have, you have a certain amount of reward in ratio to it. Okay. So, let's have an example now. Let's say, ang risk mo is $10, and then ang, pro, ang reward mo, or ang take profit mo is $20. So, meaning, in that particular trade, if it hits a negative 10, dun sa account mo, negative $10 yung trade, uh, automatic out ka na kagad sa market. That's your risk. Your reward is what you're targeting. So sabihin natin, target mo $20. So what I recommend is that you have a risk reward of 1 to 2. Uh, for every $10 that you risk, you should on, always target twice or more. Okay. Bakit? Kasi po, kahit 50%, 40% ang batting average mo, Profitable ka pa rin. Okay? Even though you only win like 40% of the time, you're still profitable. Let's do the math. Trades 1 to 3, minus $10 ka. Trades 4 to 6, panalo tayo. 7 talo, 8 panalo, 9 and 10 talo. So if you total it, you have like only 4 out of 10 trades that were profitable. But if you add them up, you got $80 and lost $60, may neto ka ng 20. So, what I'm saying here is that even though you're not making more than 50% uh, batting average, profitable ka pa rin with simple risk-reward ratio. So that's what I recommend. I'm not gonna restrict you to, in getting anong gusto niyong risk-reward. Kasi yung iba gusto 1 is 1 lang. Okay lang naman. Okay, kayo po bahala. That's your, that's your trade. But it would be more difficult to, to do that because you need to win more than 50% of the time. Okay. Uh, sa totoo lang po, Mahirap po yung, mahirap po actually more than 50% of the time. Kahit ako personally, my batting average right now is 50 to 60. Okay? And, my God, ang tagal ko na pong ginagawa tong, tong trading na to. And, uh, I'm still getting 50 to 60 batting average. Okay? Now, I just have good risk-reward management. That's why I'm, uh, kahit pa paano, okay yung ano, uh, okay yung reward. Okay? I usually carry it 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3. Kapag medyo sa tingin ko, kaya magandang maganda yung entry ko, maliit lang yung, yung risk, I can aim for higher reward, like 1 to 40 euro. Okay? 
1 is to 5, hindi ko na inaabot yun. Normally, 1, 1 is to 4, 1 is to 3. Okay. So, even though I I have a poor batting average, 50%, okay lang. So, uh, I suggest that you also have good risk reward. At least minimum 1 is to 2. Para hindi naman, uh, hindi mahirap bawiin yung losses. Okay, exactly. Sabi nga po ni uh, Ma'am Jessie, uh, gains are still gains. Kahit 20 lang yung kinita mo, okay lang yan. 20 pa rin yan. So, let's go back to uh, dot sizing, no? Yung risk reward. So, this is uh, yung konting nitty gritty na. Okay? So, we're gonna go to the charts now. And ang ating magic uh, sticky notes. Ito muna ang gagamitin nating blackboard. Right. So, uh, let's break uh, down the math of yung lot, lot sizing nyo. No? Um, this might be a little technical, so please bear with me. But uh, since we have time, I can we can discuss this uh, thoroughly. No? So, yeah, all right. Okay. Ngayon po, kapag nag-trade kayo, you open the trade, this is what you'll get, right? You have... Uh, yung volume nyo. Okay? Volume is the amount of money that you're trading. Okay? How much are you trading? That's what volume is. And it's measured in lots. Okay? So, liti ko lang ha. Volume is the amount of trade that you're making or rather, kung gano karaming pera yung tinitrade mo. Okay? And it is measured in lots. Okay? So, ano po ipig sabihin ng lot na yun? One lot, how much is, is one lot? Okay? Uh, our brokers, uh, we have a, ano yan, uh, our brokers uh, are more concerned with uh, required margin formula, equity times 2 divided by margin. Actually, uh, some brokers are uh, concerned with margin, but uh, sa totoo lang is it's kind of difficult to compute if you're starting out. So, basta wag ka lang umabot sa margin call, you're still on the safe side. Okay, kapag wag ka lang umabot sa margin call. That's the only time maybe you can do it for margin. Or kapag talagang sinasagad mo yung leverage ng account mo, if you're making the most out of your account, talagang medyo mataas yung risk ng trade mo, then that's the time when you, uh, when margin is very important. But if you're trading uh, yung exposure na recommended natin kanina, which is 0 0.01 per $100, uh, you'll be fine with those ones. Uh, but thank you, Sir Vito, for, for the margin formula. Actually, uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, formula. Equity times 2 divided by 100 divided by margin required. Okay. Yan po yung nakikita niyo sa oba. Uh, let me just show you what Sir Vito is talking about. There you go. Margin, P margin. So, alright. Uh, actually, medyo uh, a little technical din. Uh, close to yung i uh, ano yung okay, Sir Vito. Uh, I did discuss that. Uh, so, one lot, ano pa ipig sabihin nun? If you put yung volume dito ng one lot, okay, and then if you click buy, ano ba yung ginawa natin exactly? Okay. Now let's break it down. What hap what will happen there? Okay. One lot is equal to 100,000 units. Okay. One lot is equal to 100,000 units. Okay. Um, pasensya po sa pag-explain. If you guys have any questions regarding to sa, sa clarification sa pag-explain, sabihin nyo na po, because I might not and this is a little bit technical to explain. Okay. And ako din po, hindi ako gano'ng kagaling sa math. Okay. So, um, one lot is equal to 100,000 units. So, when you say buy Euro USD, buy Euro USD, technically what you're doing is you're buying Euro and you're selling the US dollar, right? So, what you're doing there is you're buying 100,000 Euros. So, in order to buy 100,000 euros, gano karaming US dollars ang kailangan natin. Okay? To buy 100,000 euros, you need, nakasulat naman po yung conversion. So, right now, it's uh, 1.08 na lang. Para hindi mo ilaw na. 1.08. Uh, you need 1.08 okay, times 100,000. Times okay, 100,000. So, nakita niyo po equation. Oh. So, that's it. 
that is actually where you'll get that. Okay, so roughly we need if you compute for that, we need hundred eight one oh eight thousand dollars to get or rather to buy one hundred thousand euros. Clear ba? Uh, so for every one lot, if you say buy Euro USD, you're buying hundred thousand euros. And in order to buy 100,000 euros, you need 100,000, uh, 108,000 uh, US dollars. So naturally, hindi natin kaya abutin siguro yun. Okay. Uh, depende, if you're a really rich guy, uh, I hope you have that. Okay. Um, but uh, for us, baka hindi natin kaya yun. So that's where leverage comes in. Leverage. So leverage is a dodgy concept, especially if uh, you're starting out in the market. So what's leverage? To simplify it, leverage is uh, the broker allows you to trade more with less capital. Okay? It allows you to trade more with less capital. How? Ang ginagawa ng broker is parang pinapautang na niya. Okay? So, with the small capital that you have, ang gagawin ng broker is papautangin ka niya so that you can trade more. Okay? But naturally, pag pinautang ka niya, okay, you have more to trade. So, your profits can be more and your losses can also be more. Okay? Amplified, both losses more and profits more. Now, all of the losses and profits will be reflected on you. Parang tinulungan ka lang ng broker. Pero pag natalo yan, lahat ng losses sa'yo pa rin. So, yun yung ginagawa ng leverage. So, let's say your leverage is 1 is to 100, right? Meaning, for every $1 that you have, you can command up to $100 with that particular $1. Okay? So, yung account mo kaya mo ng times 100, okay? basically. That's what it means. So, if you have a leverage of uh, 1 is to 100, okay, so technically you just need 1%, right? Okay. So, what is 1% of uh, 108,000 uh, dollars? 1% okay. of that is, tama ba? It's 1% uh, is 1.8, tama ba? 1,008. Am I right? Is my math right? Tama naman yata. So, yeah. So technically, this is if you have a leverage of one is to one hundred, okay, you need an amount of amount of one thousand eighty dollars in order to buy one lot of euros. Okay, is that clear? Okay. You mga nasa Nandito online yan. Uh, is that clear? Or would you like me to uh, have another round? Suffice ba? Okay, take two, take two, take two, take two. Right. Uh, no, no problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, yung sinasabi ko po na amount dito, this is how much money you need uh, if you have a leverage of 1 is to 100. Okay. Kailangan mo ng $1,080 with a leverage of 1 is to 100 in order to buy one lot of pure USD. Okay? So, yan natin ha. Let's try to recap it a little bit. One lot, remember, is 100,000 units. Okay? One lot is equal to 100,000 units. Meaning, kapag kinilik nyo po yung 1 dito, tas nag-buy kayo, that is equivalent to buying 100,000 euros. Okay? That is equivalent to buying 100,000 euros. Euros. Okay. So, akala ng mga tao, with their $500 account, okay, which is a very small capital, okay, kapag nag-click sila ng buy sa Euro USD ng one lot, okay, gaya ng ginawa ni yung kapatid natin si Goldie, nung nagsisimula siya mag-trade, okay, uh, she bought one lot of Euro USD uh, with a $500 account. So, hindi niya alam na what she actually did was that she bought 100,000 euros. Okay. So, just to give you the gravity of what you're doing with one lot. Okay. Now, in order to buy 100,000 euros, yung exchange rate ngayon is 1 is to 1.108. Sorry, sorry, tama 1.08 Okay. So, sabihin na lang natin yun muna yun. Yun muna yung exchange rate natin. 1.08. So, technically, you need $1.08 for every 1 euro that you're gonna buy. So, if you bought 100 euros, wait lang, tanggalin ko lang stop loss nito. Um, I, I need it for uh, discussion purposes later. Uh, if I order, modify order. 
Okay, there you go. So, okay, sorry, let me go back to that. Um, so going back for if you need if you're going to buy hundred thousand euros, you need hundred eight thousand US dollars. That's the conversion rate. Now. So naturally, if you want to buy hundred thousand euros, okay, uh, if you want to buy one lot of uh, euro USD, ito kailangan yung laman ng account natin, the trading account natin, which is very hard to get. Okay, so what the broker does is that it gives you leverage, meaning it allows you to trade more than what you have in your account. Okay? So, parang pinapautang na niya. So, yun yung tawag sa leverage. Okay? Leverage is yun yung maximum na kaya niya ipautang sa'yo. Okay? So, sabihin natin yung leverage mo is 1 is to uh, 1 is to 2 muna. Para hindi mo gano'n. Okay? Let's go for 1 is to 2. Meaning, for every $1 that you have in your account, kaya mong mag-command ng $2. Or you can purchase uh an amount of twice its value, okay? So, in order to buy 100,000 euro USD, okay, ng euros, you need 108,000. Now, if you have a leverage of 1 is to 2, sabi ng broker, o oh, sige, kalahati na lang yung kailangan mong ilabas para mabili mo yung 1 lot, okay? If you make it 1 is to 10, meaning for every $1 you have, you can command $10. Ang broker, sasabihin siya, o oh, sige, Kailangan mo lang maglabas ng 1 is to 10, that's 10%, di ba? Okay, so kailangan mo lang maglabas ng 10% nung gusto mo talagang bilhin. I will allow you to buy that one lot already. Okay? So, we just need 18,000 US dollars, oh sorry, uh, 10,800 US dollars instead. Kasi 10% na lang siya ng uh, 108,000. Now, if your leverage is 1 is to 100, you can command up to $100 for every single dollar that you have. So that's a lot actually. So sabi ng broker, alright, 1% na lang ang kailangan mong ilabas para mabili mo yung 100,000 euros na yan. Okay. So you only need $1,080 in your account in order to buy that. Kaya siya naging 1 is 2, uh, sorry, uh, naging 1,080 to buy 100,000 euros. Kaya kapag ang leverage mo, mas mataas, sabihin natin, leverage mo is 1 is to 500, that's a uh, high leverage. Okay. Pag minaximum mo yan, konti lang talaga ang kailangan mo. Okay. So, uh, 1% divided by 5 pa, which is only 0.2% na lang. 0.2% na lang ang kailangan mo of this amount. Okay. Which is... Uh, it should be like 200 something dollars. Ang kailangan mo lang sa account mo. So ito parang, this one divided by 5, I think that is only 200, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 216, tama ba? 216 dollars, am I right? So, anyway, 216, yeah, there you go. So, uh, it should only be 216 dollars in your account, okay? So, just to give you what would be the appropriate leverage to use, actually, that's a very good question. Um, the, the leverage is not actually important, okay? Okay lang, you can actually opt to have a 1 is to 500, 1 is to 100, 1 is to 200 leverage. It's okay, okay? Um, the important part is we control yung lot sizing natin, which is the amount that we put sa volume. Okay. So, hindi naman po ipig sabihin na 1 is to 100 yung leverage natin. Kailangan gamitin natin yung buong 1 is to 100. We don't need to do that. Okay. Actually, that's very dangerous. What you need to do instead is you just control yung tamang lot sizing natin. Okay. Which is, number 1, pwede mong gamitin yung guideline natin kanina dito, which is 0 0.01 lots for every $100 that you have. Okay. That's a good uh, good guide to have. Okay. But if you want to be more accurate with your profits or losses, okay, or yung lot sizing natin, what we can do is that we can compute for it manually. Okay. How do we do that? Okay. Let's make a let's make a trade. Okay. All right. 
let's uh, have a trade right now. Ayan, si Hiroya, si Hiroya. Okay, there you go. So, sabihin natin for the Euro USD, GU, GU buy. O, sige, tingnan natin, tingnan natin. Thank you, sir, for that. Saves us a good time to layo na. <laughs> ah, layo na. O, sige, sige, pwede na, pwede na. Uh, wait na, pero pwede na. <laughs> Alright, so, let's, let's try that. Uh, ano na ko tau? Shake for discussion. There is not really much analysis on it. Uh, so, let's try it out. So, let's say, like enter tayo dito, no? we're gonna enter this trade. And you want your stop loss to be somewhere here. Okay. Let's uh, mark it down. Okay. Dito stop loss natin. And then, so, kung ito yung stop loss natin, let's say it's just below the, the, the bars right here. So, ang stop loss natin, sabihin natin is, uh, let's make it 50 pips, para hindi magalala. Uh, ang target natin should be like 100. So, it should be around here, which is around uh, 2318. 2318. So, it should be somewhere there. Right. So, we have our stop loss over here, and then we have our take profit right there. So, from here, nakikita niyo na po yung risk reward natin. We're risking like around 50 pips and then we're aiming for 100. Okay, so 1 is to 2 risk reward yan. Now, let's say our account right now is uh, 600, $680. Okay, medyo hindi pa siya profit. Sabihin natin 665 na lang. Let's base it on that. Or rather, uh, $650 na lang. So, what is 1%? Let's try to risk siguro mga 1% muna. No? Let's say, uh, what is 1% of 665? Okay. That would be around $6.5. Okay. So, let's write it down. No? Ang risk natin is, should only be, if we have a 1% risk, 1, 2, 3, 1% risk, it should only be of 665 US dollars. It should only be um, 6.6 euro, 6.6 US dollars, right? Or 6.5, para nimo lang. Yan lang ang total na pwede nating matalo sa trade na to, okay? With 50 pips, okay? So remember, 50 pips po yung risk natin, no? And we're only risking $6.5. Is it clear uh, up to this point? Clear pa before we move on with completing it? Yep, clear pa. Alright, alright, that's good. Okay. So, remember, we're risking $6.5 in this trade. And we can only lose 50 pips. Kasi yun yung, ano natin, yung stop loss natin. So, what you do is you divide your $6.5 with how many pips yung total stop loss natin. Okay? So, uh, so $6.5 divided by 6.5 sorry, 6.5 divided by uh, 50 pips which is equal to Sorry, uh, can you make a calculator? 0.13. Okay, 0.13. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, it is equal to uh, 0 0.13. Or technically, what we're having here is kailangan 0 0.13 cents lang ang ano natin, ang per pip natin. Nakita niyo po kung paano natin nakuha. Is it clear? Meaning, kanina, $6.5 yung total risk natin. Kasi yung 1%. And then, 50 pips yung stop loss natin. So, kailangan within 50 pips, hanggang $6.5 lang yung makawala sa atin. Okay, so, how do we do that? We divide yung $6.5 by how many pips yung stop loss natin. So, 
6.5 dollars divided by 50 equals 0.13. Meaning, for every pip, dapat ang value lang nun is 0.13 dollars or 10 or 13 cents. Clear? So, ano po yung pinakamalapit sa 13 cents natin? It should only be ano yung lot size natin? 0 0.01 exactly. Right? So, ganyan po siya compute okay. uh, Let's try to compute with a bigger amount. Kasi mahirap po yung pipit natin. Kasi 665. Eh. Let's try to compute for 2,000. Ay, sorry. Before we do that, let's make the trade na yung dito ngayon. Okay. So, let's buy this pair right now. Since, um, pwede lang natin bilhin ay 0 0.01. Okay. We put it there. Ang stop loss natin is written here. So, it's at 1.216. 1.216. Grabe, yung baba na ng pound, no? And then, take profit is 1.2318. So, if we buy it here, there you go. Right. Oops, sorry, medyo sumaba lang ko sa tapas natin. So, if you check it out, you know, lumalabas, so, drag to modify, profit is negative 6.32. Okay? Meaning, yan po yung buong risk natin. Okay? Negative 6.32. If it hits that stop loss, yan yung maximum na matatalo natin. So, it's already written there. Yung profit natin should be 1 is 2. Okay? If you're risking, parang mali yata yung take profit natin dito. Let's move it a little bit. Sorry, 60 pala yung naka-risk sa atin. So, let's try to make it uh, 120. Dapat mga nandito yung isa natin take profit natin. Na. Should be around there. There you go. So, take profit is, is that? $11. So, roughly, nandun na sa 1 is 2, 2 ratio. Um, so, okay naman po, no? It's clear? Let's try to make uh, another trade. May ano ba kayo? Trade ideas kayo? Euro USD ganina. May mga nagabang ba dun? Parang di pa, no? Uh, Oh, wala na sa gitna lahat ng ng trade. Or di mistake. Okay, let's go with this trade. Ito. 120. All right, let's go with this trade. Uh very short term. All right. So, let's try this uh, really really short term trade. So, sabihin natin we are let's take this short, okay? Sobrang counter trend. This is a this is a horrible trade by the way. Uh but for the sake of argument, let's try it out. Uh, so, ang goal natin is baba siya hanggang dito. Okay? And then, ang risk natin is somewhere about here. Uh, dito tayo sa UCAD para masaya. Ang risk natin is around, let's make it 35 pips. So, ang target natin is around 70. So, it's roughly around here. Okay. okay so, 35 pips, sorry, ang ano natin, ang stop loss natin, and then 70 ang ating take profit. So, let's say we have an account of $2,000. Okay. Erase natin ito, ano? 1% of $2,000 is how much? 20. 20, no? 20. So, $20 divided by, we are now risking 35 pips. So, 20 divided by 35 is equal to, meron ba may calculator? Meron yata ako dito. 0.57. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh-huh. 57. Okay. So, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, it should be at point, so, 0 0.57. Okay. 
So meaning kung 0 0.057, that should only be, ano po dapat? Point, actually, nasa gitna siya. Pwede 0.05 or 0 0.06. Okay? Uh, let's go with the 0 0.06 uh, na lang. Okay? Alright. So, yun po yung kailangan nating lot size na ilalagay. So, if we were to take this trade, new order, sell tayo na, 0 0.06. Ang stop loss natin is 1.3358 and then ang take profit natin is 1.3256 There you go. Alright? So, pag sinek nyo po yung ano dito, ang profit natin is $31 and then ang risk natin is 14 which is less than uh, $20. Okay. So, okay naman po. Is it clear? Alright, that's great. So, okay, so let's just recap what we had for uh, this session. But we need to break it down to multiple lots. Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, wait, sorry. What do you mean by break it down to multiple lots? Parang multiple trades siya. Ah, para umabot siya ng point, uh, point 0.57. Pwede, pwede, actually. Pero, well, let's keep it simple for now. But yeah, actually, uh, if you want to uh, really target that point fifty-seven, uh, thank you for that, sir. Um, actually, oh, uh, kailangan doing yun for that. There's also this thing that I'd like to show you guys. Uh, hindi yata siya alam naman nito ay wita. Let me just make a trade for the sake of discussion. Now, wita. Uh, Okay, anyway, uh, let's just wait for this trade to move somewhere and then may papakita ko sa inyo, especially for the guys who uh, who hedge uh, positions. Uh, hedging meaning yung may nakabuy ka, may nakasell ka at the same time, same amount para nakalock lang yung price. I'll show you something nifty to lessen yung uh, commissions nyo or yung ano nyo, yung bayad nyo sa broker uh, to uh, para mabawasan yung, yung bayad nyo sa spread. It's actually built inside MT4. Hindi lang natin, uh, majority, uh, hindi lang alam yung, ano, yung uh, multiple close yung, ano, yung gabi natin. Anyway, let's just wait for it to move around. Anyway, so, let's just recap what we had for today. So, the so trading po, it's not only your strategy that is important, psychology and risk management is equally as important as your strategy. Okay? Trading psychology deals with how you uh, how you trade. Okay? Remember, kaya po iba ang demo account, the live account nyo, is that you have money in ego involved. Okay? So before opening a trade, there are a few things that you need to do first. Check your trading plan. Pasok ba sa trading plan mo yun? Okay, you have to have a checklist, you have to have correct risk management, and you have to have a logical target. Next is avoid analysis paralysis. Just stick with your trading plan. Okay? Accept the small risk at the start and always remember that the market will always be there and will always present opportunities for you. Okay? So whenever you have a losing trade, if you have doubt, set in, check my journal mo. Check my risk, ego, and avoid looking at the charts all the time. With uh, a winning trade, this is actually more difficult. Accept that the winning position is not yet a profitable trade. Kasi po, pag in-accept nyo na from the start na panalo ka na agad, it will hurt you more if it didn't go your way. Okay? So, when in doubt, is your target logical and are the charts really reversed? 
for risk management, I suggest that you only risk one to two percent uh, whenever you're trading. Two to three is considered medium risk. Three percent higher is considered high risk. And if you want to have a no-brainer with your lot sizing, 0 0.01 for every hundred dollars, that's your maximum open trade. Okay. And uh, always remember, risk reward plays a big role. Okay. Uh, try to have at least one is to two risk reward when you're trading. All right, so let's see, did it go somewhere? There you go, okay, it went somewhere. Right, uh-huh. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, I'll just set it up for you para makita. Right. Okay. So uh, I have this uh, very interesting thing for you guys. Uh, okay. So for the people na nagi hedge mostly, okay. Check this out. Uh, tanggalin ko na yung mga previous trades natin na para magulo. No? This is actually a nifty thing. Uh, I kind of learned it recently. Okay. So, kita nyo po, you have profit of 0.67. Kasi sabi natin na kahit kayo, no? Uh, meron kayo isang buy, isang sell. Isang profit, 154. Isang negative, uh, whatever. Okay. So, total profit nyo is like 0.67 or 0.50 something lang, no? So, if you wanna make the most out of it, what you do is, remember, ah, ang profit natin is 0 0.50, 0 0.6 lang, no? So, sa account history, ito lang po yung makikita natin recently. No? It's currently at 668.67. Sulat natin, no? para hindi natin mula. 668.67. And we should only earn siguro mga 0.67. Tama ba? 0.58. Ayan, 0.6. No? If you use multiple close, open mo siya. Uh, multiple close. And then, kinalik mo to. What happens is, nanenegate yung isa na spread. Okay. Uh -huh. Alright, here you go. So, ang nangyari dyan is, uh, yung account natin before was at 668, remember? And then, yung total niya ngayon is already at 6670. 6, uh, sorry, 670.69. So, if you actually add these up, mas malaki yung kinita natin. Di ba, no? Interesting, no? Uh, let me just break it down to you para mas makita niyo po yung ano, yung math. Uh, baka hindi niyo ma-appreciate. Eh. Um, pero ang nangyari po kasi yung isa na wala ng spread. So, hindi kayo nagbayad to spread nung siya. Okay. Um, yeah, magic, no? <laughs> uh, 668. Point uh, 67 plus yung kanina natin is point, hindi nga point 67, point 58 yung kanina, di ba? O sabihin natin point 6 para, para safe. Point 6 plus point ah, uh, sige, lagyan natin 58. Dapat 669 lang yung lalabas, pero ang total na lababas is 670, so I actually earned at least a dollar from it, more. Natanggal yung spread. So, if you have a hedged position, that is what you do. <laughs> Multiple close. It saves you uh, some money. Alright, so magic moment. Okay. Anyway, so it's uh, already 11 o'clock and uh, I think that's all the time we have for today. So let's natin yung buong two hours. Um, so thank you guys for coming. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyo. Thank you, thank you.
uh, in fairness na buo natin yung ano, buo natin yung webinar. We were supposed to move it kanina na kasi konti lang yata hindi pero dumami tayo. So thank you guys for for making this uh, a successful webinar. Um, actually madami din nag-message na uh, ituloy yung recording, ituloy yung webinar because they would like to watch it. So uh, thank you din po sa mga nag ano, sa mga nag-share ng ideas nyo, uh, experiences nyo that would actually uh, be very helpful for the group kasi alam po natin na yun din po ang dadaanan nila, uh, dadaanan ng lahat, okay? especially for the people who have been training for a while now. Thank you Sir Vito, uh, thank you Jesse, thank you Sir Alex, uh, everyone uh, and uh, nila po, okay? Yes, patience lang Brad, takbo takbo. Um, just a few things that uh, before we, sorry, before we end, just a few things um, Number one po, yung sa Brightwin, sayang po yun. Yung ano natin, trading competition. Literal po, nag, yung $5,000 account po na yun. At seryoso po kami doon. And yung, uh, yung trading strategy po nila, it's not perfect, but it's profitable. It's actually worth So this trading strat is actually more valuable than the uh, than what you're getting dun sa trading account. So if you guys are up for it, uh, join the contest. Kasi konti pa lang po ang sumasali. So... You actually have a good chance of winning. Okay? Uh, konti pa lang po siya masari. And we, we might end it ng first week of November. Okay? Uh, right. So, yun lang po. Uh, Jaka, thank you din po sa mga nagano. Then, seller, seller ka lang. <laughs> yun po. So, thank you for everything. And, uh, hope to see you next week. Okay? Uh, tingnan natin kung ano yung pwede nating topic next week. Pero mostly, how to build your own strategy. Yun ang plan natin for next week. Okay. Okay. Thanks guys, good night. Enjoy your Friday night. Bye bye. AVG detection. Bye bye, bye bye.